Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at knowledge distillation. What is it and what are its applications? Knowledge distillation is a process of transferring or distilling the knowledge of a large cumbersome model in a smaller model with marginal drop in accuracy and goodness but significant reduction in the model size which makes it more uh, useful in real time deployment where there is strict limits on latency throughput and performance and as well as on small devices with limited memory and compute these smaller models are a are boon and with knowledge distillation we can achieve it so let's dive deep into the concept of knowledge distillation so as deep learning models are gaining more and more popularity there are challenges with large scale deployment of such deep learning models large scale machine learning models and deep learning models are become pretty are becoming pretty common due to their state of art performance across various problem statements for instance gpt3 is trained on 570 gb of text which consists of 175 billion parameters and these models are getting bigger and bigger every day however while training large models has improved state of art performance deploying such cumbersome model especially in real time production systems with real time inference needs of performance latency and throughput is a challenge so knowledge distillation helps overcome this challenge by capturing or distilling the knowledge of a complex machine learning model so this the bigger model is the complex machine learning model into a smaller single model that is easier to deploy without significant loss in performance but reduction in the size so once again knowledge distillation is a process of transferring the knowledge from a large model to a smaller model which can be practically deployed in real world scenarios which is uh, the online systems and essentially it's a type of model compression and knowledge distillation is performed very commonly on neural network models associated with complex architectures and uh, as the technique is pretty helpful in deploying neural network solution to edge devices because edge devices like mobile devices have limited memory and compute so knowledge distillation is a boon for this kind of use cases and as the success of deep learning is going uh, coming in all the fields which is speech image natural language processing knowledge distillation has gained prominence for practical real world applications and even you would have seen whenever the models like bert or transformer these are released always a distilled or a smaller version of it is also released which can be useful in actual uh, real uh, world applications in knowledge distillation a smaller student model learns to mimic a teacher model and leverage the knowledge of teacher to obtain similar accuracy how that is done we will uh, see in more details so next is how knowledge distillation works right so uh, so what is a knowledge in neural network the if if a teacher model is trained and available the knowledge is in the form of learned weights like parameters learned weights and biases and uh, there is rich diversity in the source of the knowledge of this deep neural network because it has many parameters so multiple parameters different parameters are learning different things so there is rich diversity in the knowledge of this large deep uh, neural networks now typical was uh, typically what knowledge distillation uh, methodologies uh, works or depends on uh, one is the final predicted probability of the source teacher model that is the first thing uh, in one way of uh, using knowledge that is we will just use the final predicted probability or lo uh, logic of the teacher model second is some models some techniques also focus on weights and activations of in, in intermediate layer so if this is a deep neural network model definitely we can use the output layer that is the output prediction but also there is lot of knowledge in this intermediate layer if we can learn how the activation maps are produced in in, in each intermediate layers that can also serve as a knowledge and third way of capturing the knowledge is like there are many layers every layer will have its own activation maps maps if we can find the relationship between these activation maps and ensure that the student model the smaller model also produces activation maps which have similar relationship then that way also the knowledge transfer can happen so the knowledge distillation can happen in three ways three ways one is response based knowledge where we just use the final predicted probability feature based knowledge where we use how the activation maps are getting generated at each layer and third is relation based knowledge where we looked at the relationship between different activation maps of different layers we will see in all, see all three of these in more details in the upcoming slides but this is the brief how knowledge distillation works the first one is response based knowledge right so response based knowledge is useful is usually used in the context of supervised learning because only in supervised learning we will have a target output and we will have a predicted probability and response based knowledge uses the final probability response based knowledge focuses on the final output layer of the teacher model the hypothesis is that 
the square model will learn to mimic the predictions of the teacher model. This is achieved by using a loss function, which is termed as distillation loss. That captures the difference between logic of the student model and the logic of the teacher model. So basically, what we are saying, teacher model, uh, we will pass data from teacher model when predicted probability will come, right? We would want the student model also when same data is passed, same pr predicted probability should come. And we will try to minimize the difference between what the student model is predicting and what teacher model are predicting, and that will become our loss function. And also one more clever trick is used that a part of from the distillation loss, also some weightage, let's say 90% weightage is given to the distillation loss, some weightage will also be given to student loss. And what is student loss? The student loss function is the difference between the student predictions and the ground truth. Actually, the teacher model was actually trained on ground truth, but here also we want the student model's prediction to be similar to ground truth also. And the right balance helps in even better learning. But usually what I have seen, 90 or 80% large weightage is given to distillation loss and and small weightage is given to um, the student loss. And in multi-class classification problem, the predicted probability won't be one single probability, but it will be a probability distribution across various output classes, right? Which is estimated using a softmax function. So, uh, what the knowledge distillation in response-based knowledge, how it works in um, multi-class classification is that the student model should learn the uh, learn how to mimic the probability distribution across multiple uh, classes, how the teacher model is predicting. And also there is a parameter called temperature, uh, which I don't want to talk in uh, greater details. I will have a separate video on temperature, but also good to know there is a temperature parameter, which helps the student model to understand what kind of distribution we want to learn from teacher model, whether we want a softer distribution of the softmax probabilities or uh, mimic a uh, less softer distribution. So, no need to uh, worry about the temperature parameter. I will have a separate video on it. But what happens in response based knowledge, we want to mimic the final output predicted probability of the teacher model also in the student model. Next is feature based knowledge. So, we said, right, the knowledge lies in lot of places. Either it can lie in the final predicted probability, also it can lie in the intermediate layer. In feature-based knowledge, a trained teacher model captures knowledge of data in the intermediate layer, not just the output layer, but intermediate layers. The intermediate layers learns to discriminate specific features, and this knowledge can be used to train a student model and how it is done. In feature-based knowledge distillation, the goal is to train the student model to learn the same feature activations as the teacher model. So, every layer will have some output, which is in the form of neurons. We would log, we will want that this feature activation of the teacher model should be mimicked by the student model as well. The distillation loss function is defined as minimizing the difference between feature activation of the teacher model and the student model. We will see in more details in this slide. So, uh, the process of training a student model to mimic the activation of teacher network can be formalized as an optimization problem. So, let's denote the activation of teacher network as T and the student network as S and what we want to minimize is the squared loss between the activations of teacher model and the uh, student model where the blue are the weights that we want to learn for the student model which best mimics these uh, intermediate layers layers activation function now one thing that will come to mind is okay the bigger model has more parameters it will have more number of values in the activation map while student model is a smaller model it will have less values in the activation map how can this kind of loss function work when dimension of teacher model is high, more when the dimension of student model is uh, less in the final output so typically the student network is smaller in size than the teacher network, meaning it has fewer neurons in each layer and fewer layers in total. In order to handle this difference, that is of fewer layers and fewer neurons, uh, the activation from the teacher network are typically averaged or down sampled to match the dimension of student network activation. Once they are down sampled, then uh, we can use these loss functions. This can be done by taking the average over multiple neurons. The loss function used during training is then based on the difference between these downsampled target activations and actual activations of the student network. So, uh, till now we have covered response based knowledge and feature based knowledge. Third and the final one is relation based knowledge transfer is also there. So, in response based we have seen it uses the final predicted probability. In uh, feature based it uses the activation map, map of the intermediate layers as the knowledge. In relation based knowledge, uh, that, uh, it refers to the transfer of knowledge between two neural networks based on relationship between their feature representation. So, this can be done using various methods such as correlation between feature maps, similarity matrix, feature embeddings or probability distribution based on feature representation. So, what happens is we have multiple layers and each layer will have some activation. 
in the previous uh, feature base we were just trying to mimic that the feature activation should be similar but now in relation based knowledge what we can do is we can create a similarity matrix where each entry of the matrix will denote that let's say there are five layers in teacher model between first layer and second layer how is the similarity between the activation map and between second and third third and fourth so all nc2 combination can be created and it can come as a form in the form of a matrix now we will get a matrix where that matrix denotes what is the similarity between the activations of different layer of the teacher model done now we would like the smaller student model should also should also have a similarity matrix similar to the uh, teachers model similarity matrix where the similarity matrix each value denotes the activation uh, maps similarity between layers right so that is what we can uh, what we do here one way to implement is do, is to use a similarity matrix between feature maps of the teacher network and the student network and so for example if teacher network has feature maps of t1 t2 t3 and student network has feature maps of s1 s2 s3 we can calculate similarity matrix between these feature maps where each element of the matrix represents the similarity between two feature maps the student network can be trained to maintain similar similarity similarity matrix as the teacher model and also other way is to use the embeddings we would want the final embeddings of each layers should have uh, some relationship and say that relationship should also be maintained by the student model so in this way the relation based knowledge transfer works so we have covered knowledge distillation and we have covered response based knowledge transfer feature based knowledge transfer and relation based knowledge transfer finally how the training happens right training can happen in three ways the first is offline distillation in offline uh, distillation this is the most common one and this is what we will see in the exercise video also in this one a pre trained teacher model is available and then we later train a student model using the data to have similar uh, prediction probabilities or, or or whatever however way with a response feature or relation based however way we want to train we can use it but the idea is teacher model is available pre trained available we just do the this student models parameters learning in an offline setup in online setup uh, so what can happen in offline distillation the pre trained teacher model is usually very is usually very large in capacity right and it may not be available for offline distillation so in the online learning only when the teacher model is learning at that time only the student model is also learning inside both the teacher and student models are updated simultaneously in a single end to end training process and this will also save offline training time and efforts and third way is also one way of self distillation where there is no separate student model or teacher model but there is just one model the idea is that the knowledge uh, if the model is very large right deep neural network model uh, the knowledge from the deeper layer of the uh, deep neural network which are closer to the output can be used to train the shallow layers which are which are the earlier layers so that the earlier layers are also as intelligent as the final layer so this is one way in which these bigger models are also uh, made smarter that is having this kind of self distillation so with that we have come to the end of theory now let's have a practical session we will where we will actually do a knowledge distillation of a bigger model into a smaller model and also try to train this smaller model from scratch and see the difference whether the distillation knowledge distillation way of learning and the student model learning from scratch which one does better and what are the differences so let's get into it so uh, this is the notebook which we will go through and i will add the link of this uh, notebook in the description section so knowledge distillation we already know is a type of uh, model compression we will distill a model that was used to predict whether two items will be bought together or not so basically i have a video uh, where i have trained 1.02 billion rows of data in single gpu to generate uh, embeddings and the problem statement was whether two items will be bought together or not so there is a detailed video uh, available in youtube i will add the link of this video also in the description section and also how the model was trained uh, the kaggle notebooks which are also covered in the video i will also add in the description section in this for this exercise you don't need to know what was done there just what we have done we have taken the final model of uh, that um, exercise and we will try to make it smaller using uh, knowledge distillation and everything about if you want to know you still want to know about it is uh, made available in the links and all also it will, the links will be available in the description section now uh, we first load all the files you can basically clone this notebook to try it yourself now um, the problem statement as i was saying was instacart data set where we had lot of uh, uh, orders and product details that is what was ordered in that uh, what was ordered in that particular order id and uh, what we did was we uh, trained the uh, model in such a way that two products will go as an input and we will try to predict if those will be purchased together or not and in this process of training this model we generated some embeddings what are embeddings i have 
videos on that as well. I will add them also in the description section. But here, let's have a look uh, how the model architecture was. This was the model architecture as I was saying. Product one, two products will go together and we will get their department embeddings, aisle embeddings and product embeddings. We will concatenate all these things and try to come up with the final probability of whether to this product. Uh, two of these products will be ordered together or not. Now this, um, I have uh, defined the whole architecture, but I won't do the training, right? I will just load the final weights uh, from that uh, learned uh, Kaggle notebook. So that output was already saved. I will just use the weights from there and won't train this model from scratch. So I have loaded the architecture. This is of 3.18 million parameters. The model is big with 3.18 million parameters. Now what we will do is, uh, we will also load the training data because we need to pass the training data to get the prediction of teacher model so that we can use the same training data in the student model and try to mimic the probability of the uh, uh, teacher model to come in the student model as well. Now training data is used, 1.02 billion rows. So we had broken down into multiple files. All of this is available. You can just clone the notebook. Now what we have done is, we have, uh, see, as I was saying, teacher model, we want to uh, train from scratch. We will just load the weights from the previous, previous exercise of that uh, video. Now we have loaded the weights and we train the teacher model. Just fine tune the model for two more uh, epochs. It, it's not needed also. We can avoid the, that as well. But just what I did, I trained for just two more epochs. And mostly the training weights I had used from the last uh, exercise only. And we can see the uh, accuracy it can reach is around 64.5%. Now we define a smaller student model as well with just 795k parameters. So the teacher model was 3.18 million and this is 795k. So it's around 4 to 5 times smaller than the teacher model. So what I have done, I have kept the architecture same, just I have reduced the size. That is embedding size there was uh, uh, higher. I have just reduced the embedding size and it has reduced the architecture parameters as well. So product embedding size were reduced from 64 to 16, department aisle embedding reduced from 16 to 4 bits and as a result we get a model with lesser parameters which is only 795k. Now the real thing that we want to learn we will see that is uh, how knowledge distillation works. Strain model to parent model parameter ratio is 24.9%. So basically strain model is just 24.9% of the uh, parameters in the teacher model. Uh, I have used the codes of knowledge distillation from this link for, with some modification because this uh, link had a example where there was multi classification problem but for us well, it's just uh, it's just a binary classification order or not so I uh, can make some tweaks. Uh, the code is very simple you can just copy it copy it as it is just the difference or the main part to focus is two things which is the strain loss function and distillation loss function. So there is a strain loss function as I was saying some small weightage, uh, weightage is also given that the strain model tries to uh, predict the actual uh, target uh, output as well and remaining of the major weights is given to the distillation loss that is don't try to predict the target which is order or not but try to predict what is the probability that teacher model predicted because that is what's more important because larger model it would have learned many diverse patterns we want to strain model to uh, learn the uh, what teacher model has learned if we just wanted the strain model to learn what target variable is then we would have trained a smaller strain model only right to mimic the target output but we know uh, training a smaller model to predict it, uh, predict some target output is not as efficient as training a large model and then mimicking the knowledge of it in a smaller model. Knowledge distillation is more uh, is more uh, powerful than training a smaller model and we will see that as well in this video. So I have trained a strain model with uh, knowledge distillation where alpha weight is given to strain loss that is trying to mimic the actual output and remaining of the weight is given to distillation loss that is try to mimic, don't mimic the tar ground truth but mimic the predicted probability of teacher model and we know that uh, alpha should be small uh, right so alpha is around 0.1 so 10 percent weightage is given to strain loss and 90 percent which is majority of the weightage is given to distillation loss and what are this uh, knowledge uh, strain loss and distillation loss both are binary cross entropy one more thing that we can notice as i was saying the student loss is between the student prediction and actual ground truth, right? Which is why actual ground truth. But distillation loss is between student prediction and teacher prediction. So we will train this uh, student model with knowledge distillation loss function. That is 90% weightage to distillation loss and 10% weightage to student loss for 15 epochs. And it will let it, we will let it learn. 
we can see after the 15 epoch it has uh, almost reached 64% accuracy 63.956 next what we will do is we will again clone the clone the architecture of the student model and won't use distillation loss just use the student loss which is we will just try to make uh, make it learn the actual target output and we will see that why knowledge distillation is helpful why learning the mimicking the predicted probabilities or the knowledge of target model helps more than training a small model than actual tar actual uh, ground truth labels so in this second one we will just try to uh, have 100 percent weightage to student loss which is try to predict the probabilities which are as close to the ground truth so uh, one can see here these are the uh, uh, these are the parameters where we have seen said that loss is binary cross entropy there is no other student loss and distillation loss it's all uh, student loss that is we want just it to just predict the actual ground truth and we will also make it learn for 15 epochs if we see it has learned just it has the 63 percent accuracy and now if we see the difference the orange one is the one with knowledge distillation and blue one is just the student loss trying to mimic the ground truth so uh, we can see that this orange line is always greater than blue line which signifies that a student model uh, trained from scratch just on the ground truth is not as efficient as a student model which is trained uh, trying to mimic a teacher model which is a bigger model to mimic the probabilities as close to the teacher model so just learn having the ground truth is not that helpful but having a bigger model where what are the patterns it has learned that if we train a small model to capture that then that is more efficient so that is what i have noted here student model strain through knowledge distillation learns faster and better it better mimics the teacher and also has better ground truth level accuracy compared to other model in the validation set with same parameters trained just on ground truth levels from scratch the probable reason is that teacher model has already learned the right patterns and diversity and it becomes easier for a student to mimic than to learn itself from scratch with much lesser parameters because it will, it, will, it will try to learn just the ground truth level it will have to identify the patterns again but if it tries to mimic the teacher model teacher model has already identified some pattern it has to just learn to identify those patterns not care about the ground truth level much because we only give 10 percent weightage to ground truth levels and even we can just remove that weightage also we can give 100 percent weightage to distillation loss then also this uh, 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 the model learned through knowledge distillation will perform way better than the uh, model student model trained from scratch just on the ground truth levels. So with that we have come to the end of this video where we looked at knowledge distillation which is the process of transferring knowledge of a larger model and a smaller uh, model which is as accurate as the larger model but uh, has very less parameters and is actually useful in real world deployment uh, satisfying uh, latency throughput and performance uh, checks. And as well as we uh, saw in details how this uh, type of knowledge distillation uh, happens through response based learning or feature based learning or relation based learning and also we tried an example and we clearly saw that uh, that a student model which tried to mimic the teacher model learns better than a uh, separate smaller model which is just trying to learn the ground truth label from uh, scratch so with uh, that hope you liked and enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye